Chapter Twelve of The Empty House and Other Ghost Stories. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kate Fallis. The Empty House and Other Ghost Stories by Algernon Blackwood. The Strange Adventures of a Private Secretary in New York. Part Three they crossed the hall and began to ascend the carpetless wooden stairs they were in the well of the house and the air cut like ice garvey the flickering candle in his hand throwing his face into strong outline led the way across the first landing and opened a door near the mouth of a dark passage a pleasant room greeted the visitor's eyes and he rapidly took in its points while his host walked over and lit two candles that stood on a table at the foot of the bed a fire burned brightly in the grate there were two windows opening like doors in the wall opposite and a high canopied bed occupied most of the space on the right panelling ran all round the room reaching nearly to the ceiling and gave a warm and cosy appearance to the whole while the portraits that stood in alternate panels suggested somehow the atmosphere of an old country house in england shorthouse was agreeably surprised i hope you'll find everything you need garvey was saying in the doorway if not you have only to ring that bell by the fireplace marks won't hear it of course but it rings in my laboratory where i spend most of the night then with a brief good night he went out and shut the door after him the instant he was gone mr sidebottom's private secretary did a peculiar thing he planted himself in the middle of the room with his back to the door and drawing the pistol swiftly from his hip pocket levelled it across his left arm at the window standing motionless in this position for thirty seconds he then suddenly swerved right round and faced in the other direction pointing his pistol straight at the keyhole of the door there followed immediately a sound of shuffling outside and of steps retreating across the landing on his knees at the keyhole was the secretary's reflection just as i thought but he didn't expect to look down the barrel of a pistol and it made him jump a little as soon as the steps had gone downstairs and died away across the hall shorthouse went over and locked the door stuffing a piece of crumpled paper into the second keyhole which he saw immediately above the first after that he made a thorough search of the room it hardly repaid the trouble for he found nothing unusual yet he was glad he had made it it relieved him to find no one was in hiding under the bed or in the deep oak cupboard and he hoped sincerely it was not the cupboard in which the unfortunate spaniel had come to its vile death the french windows he discovered opened on to a little balcony it looked on to the front and there was a drop of less than twenty feet to the ground below the bed was high and wide soft as feathers and covered with snowy sheets very inviting to a tired man and beside the blazing fire were a couple of deep armchairs altogether it was very pleasant and comfortable but tired though he was shorthouse had no intention of going to bed it was impossible to disregard the warning of his nerves they had never failed him before and when that sense of distressing horror lodged in his bones he knew there was something in the wind and that a red flag was flying over the immediate future some delicate instrument in his being more subtle than the senses more accurate than mere presentiment had seen the red flag and interpreted its meaning again it seemed to him as he sat in an armchair over the fire that his movements were being carefully watched from somewhere and not knowing what weapons might be used against him he felt that his real safety 
lay in a rigid control of his mind and feelings and a stout refusal to admit that he was in the least alarmed the house was very still as the night wore on the wind dropped only occasional bursts of sleet against the windows reminded him that the elements were awake and uneasy once or twice the windows rattled and the rain hissed in the fire but the roar of the wind in the chimney grew less and less and the lonely building was at last lapped in a great stillness the coals clicked settling themselves deeper in the grate and the noise of the cinders dropping with a tiny report into the soft heap of accumulated ashes was the only sound that punctuated the silence in proportion as the power of sleep grew upon him the dread of the situation lessened but so imperceptibly so gradually and so insinuatingly that he scarcely realized the change he thought he was as wide awake to his danger as ever the successful exclusion of horrible mental pictures of what he had seen he attributed to his rigorous control instead of to their true cause the creeping over him of the soft influences of sleep the faces in the coals were so soothing the armchair was so comfortable so sweet the breath that gently pressed upon his eyelids so subtle the growth of the sensation of safety he settled down deeper into the chair and at another moment would have been asleep when the red flag began to shake violently to and fro and he sat bolt upright as if he had been stabbed in the back someone was coming up the stairs the boards creaked beneath the stealthy weight shorthouse sprang from the chair and crossed the room swiftly taking up his position beside the door but out of range of the keyhole the two candles flared unevenly on the table at the foot of the bed the steps were slow and cautious it seemed thirty seconds between each one but the person who was taking them was very close to the door already he had topped the stairs and was shuffling almost silently across the bit of landing the secretary slipped his hand into his pistol pocket and drew back further against the wall and hardly had he completed the movement when the sounds abruptly ceased and he knew that somebody was standing just outside the door and preparing for a careful observation through the keyhole he was in no sense a coward in action he was never afraid it was the waiting and wondering and the uncertainty that might have loosened his nerves a little but somehow a wave of intense horror swept over him for a second as he thought of the bestial maniac and his attendant jew and he would rather have faced a pack of wolves than have to do with either of these men something brushing gently against the door set his nerves tingling afresh and made him tighten his grasp on the pistol the steel was cold and slippery in his moist fingers what an awful noise it would make when he pulled the trigger if the door were to open how close he would be to the figure that came in yet he knew it was locked on the inside and could not possibly open again something brushed against the panel beside him and a second later the piece of crumpled paper fell from the keyhole to the floor while the piece of thin wire that had accomplished this result showed its point for a moment in the room and was then swiftly withdrawn somebody was evidently peering now through the keyhole and realizing this fact the spirit of attack entered into the heart of the beleaguered man raising aloft his right hand he brought it suddenly down with a resounding crash upon the panel of the door next to the keyhole a crash that to the crouching eavesdropper must have seemed like a clap of thunder out of a clear sky 
there was a gasp and a slight lurching against the door and the midnight listener rose startled and alarmed for shorthouse plainly heard the tread of feet across the landing and down the stairs till they were lost in the silences of the hall only this time it seemed to him there were four feet instead of two quickly stuffing the paper back into the keyhole he was in the act of walking back to the fireplace when over his shoulder he caught sight of a white face pressed in outline against the outside of the window it was blurred in the streams of sleet but the white of the moving eyes was unmistakable he turned instantly to meet it but the face was withdrawn like a flash and darkness rushed in to fill the gap where it had appeared watched on both sides he reflected but he was not to be surprised into any sudden action and quietly walking over to the fireplace as if he had seen nothing unusual he stirred the coals a moment and then strolled leisurely over to the window stealing his nerves which quivered a moment in spite of his will he opened the window and stepped out on to the balcony the wind which he thought had dropped rushed past him into the room and extinguished one of the candles while a volley of fine cold rain burst all over his face at first he could see nothing and the darkness came close up to his eyes like a wall he went a little further on to the balcony and drew the window after him till it clashed then he stood and waited but nothing touched him no one seemed to be there his eyes got accustomed to the blackness and he was able to make out the iron railing the dark shapes of the trees beyond and the faint light coming from the other window through this he peered into the room walking the length of the balcony to do so of course he was standing in a shaft of light and whoever was crouching in the darkness below could plainly see him below that there should be any one above did not occur to him until just as he was preparing to go in again he became aware that something was moving in the darkness over his head he looked up instinctively raising a protecting arm and saw a long black line swinging against the dim wall of the house the shutters of the window on the next floor whence it depended were thrown open and moving backwards and forwards in the wind the line was evidently a thickish cord for as he looked it was pulled in and the end disappeared in the darkness shorthouse trying to whistle to himself peered over the edge of the balcony as if calculating the distance he might have to drop and then calmly walked into the room again and closed the window behind him leaving the latch so that the lightest touch would cause it to fly open he relit the candle and drew a straight-backed chair up to the table then he put coal on the fire and stirred it up into a royal blaze he would willingly have folded the shutters over those staring windows at his back but that was out of the question it would have been to cut off his way of escape sleep for the time was at a disadvantage his brain was full of blood and every nerve was tingling he felt as if countless eyes were upon him and scores of stained hands were stretching out from the corners and crannies of the house to seize him crouching figures figures of hideous jews stood everywhere about him where shelter was creeping forward out of the shadows when he was not looking and retreating swiftly and silently when he turned his head wherever he looked other eyes met his own and though they melted away under his steady confident gaze he knew they would wax and draw in upon him the instant his glances weakened and his will wavered though there were no sounds he knew that in the well of the house there was movement going on 
and preparation and this knowledge inasmuch as it came to him irresistibly and through other and more subtle channels than those of the senses kept the sense of horror fresh in his blood and made him alert and awake but no matter how great the dread in the heart the power of sleep will eventually overcome it exhausted nature is irresistible and as the minutes wore on and midnight passed he realized that nature was vigorously asserting herself and sleep was creeping upon him from the extremities to lessen the danger he took out his pencil and began to draw the articles of furniture in the room he worked into elaborate detail the cupboard the mantelpiece and the bed and from these he passed on to the portraits being possessed of genuine skill he found the occupation sufficiently absorbing it kept the blood in his brain and that kept him awake the pictures moreover now that he considered them for the first time were exceedingly well painted owing to the dim light he centred his attention upon the portraits beside the fireplace on the right was a woman with a sweet gentle face and a figure of great refinement on the left was a full-size figure of a big handsome man with a full beard and wearing a hunting costume of ancient date from time to time he turned to the windows behind him but the vision of the face was not repeated more than once too he went to the door and listened but the silence was so profound in the house that he gradually came to believe the plan of attack had been abandoned once he went out on to the balcony but the sleet stung his face and he only had time to see that the shutters above were closed when he was obliged to seek the shelter of the room again in this way the hours passed the fire died down and the room grew chilly shorthouse had made several sketches of the two heads and was beginning to feel overpoweringly weary his feet and his hands were cold and his yawns were prodigious it seemed ages and ages since the steps had come to listen at his door and the face had watched him from the window a feeling of safety had somehow come to him in reality he was exhausted his one desire was to drop upon the soft white bed and yield himself up to sleep without any further struggle he rose from his chair with a series of yawns that refused to be stifled and looked at his watch it was close upon three in the morning he made up his mind that he would lie down with his clothes on and get some sleep it was safe enough the door was locked on the inside and the window was fastened putting the bag on the table near his pillow he blew out the candles and dropped with a sense of careless and delicious exhaustion upon the soft mattress in five minutes he was sound asleep there had scarcely been time for the dreams to come when he found himself lying sideways across the bed with wide open eyes staring into the darkness someone had touched him and he had writhed away in his sleep as from something unholy the movement had awakened him the room was simply black no light came from the windows and the fire had gone out as completely as if water had been poured upon it he gazed into a sheet of impenetrable darkness that came close up to his face like a wall his first thought was for the papers in his coat and his hand flew to the pocket they were safe and the relief caused by this discovery left his mind instantly free for other reflections and the realization that at once came to him with a touch of dismay was that during his sleep some definite change had been effected in the room he felt this with that intuitive certainty which amounts to positive knowledge the room was utterly still but the corroboration that was speedily brought to him seemed at once to fill the darkness with a whispering secret life that chilled his blood and made the sheet feel like ice against his cheek hark this was it 
there reached his ears in which the blood was already buzzing with warming clamour a dull murmur of something that rose indistinctly from the well of the house and became audible to him without passing through walls or doors there seemed no solid surface between him lying on the bed and the landing between the landing and the stairs and between the stairs and the hall beyond he knew that the door of the room was standing open therefore it had been opened from the inside yet the window was fastened also on the inside hardly was this realized when the conspiring silence of the hour was broken by another and a more definite sound a step was coming along the passage a certain bruise on the hip told shorthouse that the pistol in his pocket was ready for use and he drew it out quickly and cocked it then he just had time to slip over the edge of the bed and crouch down on the floor when the step halted on the threshold of the room the bed was thus between him and the open door the window was at his back he waited in the darkness what struck him as peculiar about the steps was that there seemed no particular desire to move stealthily there was no extreme caution they moved along in rather a slipshod way and sounded like soft slippers or feet in stockings there was something clumsy irresponsible almost reckless about the movement for a second the steps paused upon the threshold but only for a second almost immediately they came on into the room and as they passed from the wood to the carpet shorthouse noticed that they became wholly noiseless he waited in suspense not knowing whether the unseen walker was on the other side of the room or was close upon him presently he stood up and stretched out his left arm in front of him groping searching feeling in a circle and behind it he held the pistol cocked and pointed in his right hand as he rose a bone cracked in his knee his clothes rustled as if they were newspapers and his breath seemed loud enough to be heard all over the room but not a sound came to betray the position of the invisible intruder then just when the tension was becoming unbearable a noise relieved the gripping silence it was wood knocking against wood and it came from the farther end of the room the steps had moved over to the fireplace a sliding sound almost immediately followed it and then silence closed again over everything like a pall for another five minutes shorthouse waited and then the suspense became too much he could not stand that open door the candles were close beside him and he struck a match and lit them expecting in the sudden glare to receive at least a terrific blow but nothing happened and he saw at once that the room was entirely empty walking over with the pistol cocked he peered out into the darkness at the landing and then closed the door and turned the key then he searched the room bed cupboard table curtains everything that could have concealed a man but found no trace of the intruder the owner of the footsteps had disappeared like a ghost into the shadows of the night but for one fact he might have imagined that he had been dreaming the bag had vanished there was no more sleep for shorthouse that night his watch pointed to four a m and there were still three hours before daylight he sat down at the table and continued his sketches with fixed determination he went on with his drawing and began a new outline of the man's head there was something in the expression that continually evaded him he had no success with it and this time it seemed to him that it was the eyes that brought about his discomfiture he held up his pencil before his face to measure the distance between the nose and the eyes and to his amazement he saw that a change had come over the features the eyes were no longer open the lids had closed for a second he stood in a sort of stupefied astonishment a push would have toppled him over 
then he sprang to his feet and held a candle close up to the picture the eyelids quivered the eyelashes trembled then right before his gaze the eyes opened and looked straight into his own two holes were cut in the panel and this pair of eyes human eyes just fitted them as by a curious effect of magic the strong fear that had governed him ever since his entry into the house disappeared in a second anger rushed into his heart and his chilled blood rose suddenly to the boiling point putting the candle down he took two steps back into the room and then flung himself forward with all his strength against the painted panel instantly and before the crash came the eyes were withdrawn and two black spaces showed where they had been the old huntsman was eyeless but the panel cracked and split inwards like a sheet of thin cardboard and shorthouse pistol in hand thrust an arm through the jagged aperture and seizing a human leg dragged out into the room the jew words rushed in such a torrent to his lips that they choked him the old hebrew white as chalk stood shaking before him the bright pistol barrel opposite his eyes when a volume of cold air rushed into the room and with it a sound of hurried steps shorthouse felt his arm knocked up before he had time to turn and the same second garvey who had somehow managed to burst open the window came between him and the trembling marks his lips were parted and his eyes rolled strangely in his distorted face don't shoot him shoot in the air he shrieked he seized the jew by the shoulders you damned hound he roared hissing in his face so i've got you at last that's where your vacuum is is it i know your vile hiding place at last he shook him like a dog i've been after him all night he cried turning to shorthouse all night i tell you and i've got him at last garvey lifted his upper lip as he spoke and showed his teeth they shone like the fangs of a wolf the jew evidently saw them too for he gave a horrid yell and struggled furiously before the eyes of the secretary a mist seemed to rise the hideous shadow again leaped into garvey's face he foresaw a dreadful battle and covering the two men with his pistol he retreated slowly to the door whether they were both mad or both criminal he did not pause to inquire the only thought present in his mind was that the sooner he made his escape the better garvey was still shaking the jew when he reached the door and turned the key but as he passed out on to the landing both men stopped their struggling and turned to face him garvey's face bestial loathsome livid with anger the jews white and grey with fear and horror both turned towards him and joined in a wild horrible yell that woke the echoes of the night the next second they were after him at full speed shorthouse slammed the door in their faces and was at the foot of the stairs crouching in the shadow before they were out upon the landing they tore shrieking down the stairs and passed him into the hall and wholly unnoticed shorthouse whipped up the stairs again crossed the bedroom and dropped from the balcony into the soft snow as he ran down the drive he heard behind him in the house the yells of the maniacs and when he reached home several hours later mr sidebottom not only raised his salary but also told him to buy a new hat and overcoat and send in the bill to him End of chapter 12spooky ventures is the home for spooky content and spooky merchandise on the web check it out today at spookyventures.com and remember always keep it spooky <laughs>